Today we'll be demonstrating our five-stranded uh, hamstring autograft technique in which a single free limb of graft is incorporated into the four-strand uh, suspensory button construct. Uh, our goals with this technique are to first to increase the cross-sectional area and hopefully the biomechanical properties of the graft while also leaving adequate graft for the tunnel fixation and fill on both the femoral and tibial side. Second is to try to avoid the routine utilization of supplemental allograft, particularly in smaller patients. And third is to try to utilize a technique in which we feel the free fifth limb of the graft is soundly incorporated into the overall graft suspensory button construct. The semitendinosus and gracilis are harvested in standard fashion with a combination of sharp and blunt dissection and closed tendon stripper. The semitendinosus is assessed for its maximum adequate length for a one double and one single stranded limbs of the graft. Typically, uh, the overall functional length of the semitendinosus will be between 240 and 270 millimeters. Okay. Uh, the semitendinosus is marked at uh, 18 centimeters and at 27 centimeters, which will give us a, at the end a 90 uh, millimeter graft. The gracilis is then also marked at uh, 180 millimeters. Then the grafts will be prepared with a interlocking uh, number two uh, suture in each end of the graft. The mus muscular end of the semitendinosus <clears throat> will be thinned slightly, and as the crack eye stitch is put in, this end of the graft will be tubularized. So again, the, um, the graft is tubularized as the crack eye stitch is put in. As each limb, uh, the crack eye stitch is placed in each limb of the graft, the graft structure construct is pre-tensioned for a short period of time. Okay. Another stitch. Again, the double-stranded graft of semitendinosus is pre-tensioned. Okay. Low tension on it, right? Not quite that much. The double strand graft of the gracilis is also pre-tensioned. Okay. A suture is used to double the four stranded graft. And then the fifth strand of the graft will be bought up with the smaller end of the graft towards the bulleted end of the graft to get a preliminary sizing of the graft. Go ahead, Ben, bring that up. The graft should pass easily, and it will be expected that the final graft, once the suture are in, sutures are in, 
will be one millimeter larger than this preliminary sizing. And the tibial side of the graft will usually be one millimeter larger than the femoral size. Okay. Put that through there. The endo button, either typically a 10 or 15, depending on tunnel length, uh, will be used, a suspensory button, and the double limbs of the graft centered over the button and the button placed into a tensioning device. Okay. The grafts are evened and again, pre-tensioning is applied. Okay, then if you can tension that. One suture end of the crack eye stitch from the free graft is then passed through the loop of the suspensory button and minimal tension is placed on the end of the graft. This suture is then tied in a standard surgeon's knot. A free needle is then utilized to grasp both the four-limbed graph and the free limb in a locking type suture. Starting distal working proximal, both limbs of the graft are incorporated as is the free limb of the graft. In a locking suture. This is tightened. and then a second stitch will be passed. At this point, the free limb of the graft will be tucked into the core of the four-stranded graft to give it a bullet shape and appearance to promote easy passage. Again, in a locking suture fashion. These sutures are then tied. And cut. A ovicral suture is then used to gather the tibial side tails of the graft. As the graft is again being pre-tensioned.
The graft, we routinely use an extendo component to the susp suspensory button, which is then put into place. And here you can see that the inner fifth limb of the graft is incorporated inside the forelimb graft to give it a buttoned, bulleted shape at the end to promote passage, such that the fifth limb does not get caught in the tunnel. You can cut it off now. We'll come back and get one more of the final graph. So the graft is then sized for its tunnel one final time. And with usually the tibial tunnel being one centimeter larger than the femoral side. So the deal is, these are, this is a hamstring graft for your ACL. And uh, what you want is as much uh, biologic material in the graft as possible. But you also like graft in the tunnels so that it can heal in the tunnels. So this is a way of getting more graft. Some people would use a single tendon and fold it over. Some people would uh, quadruple a single tendon, but then that leaves you a very short tendon. Uh, whereas this leaves you more length in the graft to heal in the tunnels. Utilizing this method, we typically have a graft that is 80 to 90 millimeters in length uh, and circumferentially is usually 8 to 10 millimeters on the femoral side and corresponding 9 to 11 millimeters on the, uh, the tibial side of the graft. Uh, this typically will also enable us to use a 10 millimeter uh, suspensory button which gives us near complete fill with the graft in both the femoral tunnel and in the tibial tunnel. Uh, we are currently underway with biomechanical studies to see if the fifth limb of the graft is effectively incorporated into the construct as well as long-term clinical outcome studies uh, to check this graft versus the standard four-stranded graft construct. Thank you.